the last album was a very big selling record. I think for us to expect this one to match that or exceed that is an awful big assumption. A, we would like for it, you know, to do that, but I don't think we did it consciously, maybe subconsciously you do. Um, to the okay. degree that, that I think a song like um, Wait for an Answer is a very dramatic, powerful, very moving song, very emotional. I think at this stage of being in, in a, a rock band, you, after doing it for a long period of time, you sense that that's a, a valuable song for the project as a whole. So you assume that maybe that isn't going to be necessarily a single, but it's a, a vital part of the work. But I, I agree with Danny. I think that we, we don't go into a studio with a, with a real sense of this song has this purpose for this. In, in a general way, we sort of sense the importance of these songs, right? We, we want to come back right away, but unfortunately we're already booked in the States till Christmas, but we're tentatively planning from, for January and February. We want to come over here and play, especially the UK and then Europe too. It's for sure. It's been too long. It's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like we it's happening. We've been, you know, we've been hinting at it, <clears throat> hinting at it, and each day it gets a little bit closer, and I guess yesterday our management actually started to make the arrangements, yeah. so it looks like it's really going to happen, because we haven't played here live since 82 at the Dominion yeah, Theater, and uh, I was at a, I was at a the Johnny Clegg show the other night, and uh, this guy walks up to me, I thought he was going to borrow a cigarette or something from me, and uh, he goes, oh, that Dominion show, God, when are you going to come back, you know, we're really disappointed, you said you're going to be back in a year or two, and... Yeah. What happened? They I know. The show there. Yeah. There's about a thousand people outside. We do have some fans here, and so yeah. we really owe it to them to come back. And right. so he's, when, after I told him, well, it looks like we're really going to try to come over, he goes, okay, but if I see you four years from now and you haven't <laughs> yeah. played here, you know, I'm going to be You're really mad. <laughs> so, yeah, we really want to come back and play live. That's the essence of this band. It's really a live band. You know, we make records, we make videos, and all that stuff that goes along with it. But the real bottom line yeah. is our live show. Yeah, to know who Hart is, you got to see Hart, really. Yeah. Because you can't really uh, bring that live energy. It's really hard to do it in the studio. Um, you know, a lot of metal bands probably can, but, but our, our kind of music has so much more musicality to it. And, you know, so to really see us and know what we are, seeing us live is the best thing. Right, we owe it to the fans here. We can't really expect mm -hmm. the public here to really latch on to us if we don't come over and play for them so right. you know we play in the states so much everybody in america has seen us a few times so it just <laughs> doesn't seem right for us here. not to not to play here at all oh there's an uh, an incredible exchange mm -hmm. there's a there's yeah. a great okay. energy exchange mm -hmm. the kids come prepared to <laughs> share their energy and their enthusiasm and we come prepared to share the the our show and the music the last time we were here we were uh we were the punching bag group, you know, in the press. And uh, part of it was that they thought we were like rich, fat, American, bourgeoisie, blah, 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 fill in the blank slobs, you know. And, and um, it wasn't too fair because we, for one, we, weren't, we were not rich at the time. And uh, we were just trying to work, just trying to work over here and, and bring our music to the people who... Uh, had seemed to have quite the opposite opinion, you know. We had so much support yeah, from the, the guy kids. Yesterday, the guy yesterday said um, that for a band that has been around since 76, that we had avoided <clears throat> the dinosaur tag like so many bands, and he asked us why, and we said, well, it's because our music ke right. keeps up, and the fact that we're more successful now than we've ever been <coughs> proves that we st we're staying contemporary, yeah. and the stuff that we put on the radio these days is current hit music, it's not nostalgia, it's, you know, it's not the Grateful Dead over here. And it's not like the same old heavy metal kind of right. thing either. And being a stadium band in America, you know, is not a being slagged off because playing stadiums just means you have so many fans that they won't fit in a coliseum. There's nothing wrong with that. I agree. I think that uh, to be able to have that history and still be able to turn around and give people music that we believe in and inspires them to be participating with us now yeah. is a pretty cool thing. Yeah, if you don't change, if you don't change your style at all, if 
for 10 years, then you become a dinosaur, and it's a, it's a nostalgia type thing. But lots of bands been around for years, are still current, like Queen and The Stones, some of the biggest bands. Just means they have a lot of experience, and they've been making hit after hit, and they didn't disappear and break up when the going got rough. Like this band, we've been through good and bad times, and we stuck together. I think it just shows character. <coughs> Personally, I fancy myself as uh, a lifer in the music business. I <laughs> see myself uh, playing, uh, producing, uh, writing, uh, managing. I will be involved in the music business till I drop. As far as the group goes, <laughs> I see that heart could be this beautifully uh, stable thing that we all draw from and, and invest into sort of this backdrop <clears throat> to all these solo ventures. It, 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 if everything works to the best of bests, you know, heart could be there uh, throughout all of our growth changes, but uh, I don't see any stopping me participating in music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the band has quite a few good years left, and I think we're just hitting our stride. Last couple albums, we're playing the best stuff we've ever played. <clears throat> No one is not improving anymore. Everyone as a player individually are improving. And uh, to me, that's the important thing. As long as you're growing, there's no reason to stop. When you, st when you start getting stale and stagnant, then it's time to do other things. But I think playing in a, in a great band is the greatest thing you can do. And I think this band is just, just getting to that point now. Well, it's pretty much the same for me. I, um, I want to keep this band going as long as it'll go. And, uh, you know, whether that means less touring and more recording in the future, um, that's fine, too. Um, I'm also real interested in, really interested in production and getting some, helping out other bands, writing songs with people and for other bands, um, and for ourselves. And, uh, you know, doing, doing a solo thing would be great for me because I'd have a chance to spread out in more, you know, for more singing performance and more acoustic and electric playing. Even when we were younger, we didn't really have too much rivalry because uh, we, were, we were pretty busy working on learning how to play guitar and learning how to sing and play at the same time, you know. And so, uh, learning every Beatles song we could get our mitts on. So, no, we didn't, we've never really fought, you know, it's, there's so much going on, uh, things to learn, and, and even now, we're still, you know, trying to write songs and trying to be on top of things. I think, uh, it's probably a little bit easier right now for, at least for a girl that wants to get into rock to be taken seriously as, as a competent, you know, person, and musician, or singer, because there's been a few already before, you know, and, uh, it's good to see that there's more and more coming up all the time. Um, yeah, pretty much was Aretha Franklin for Anne, I know that. Uh, for me, it was uh, Joni Mitchell uh, as a songwriter and as a guitar player. Um, but not really that many women role models. It was mostly men. Well, the group got started uh, in 76. Uh, and they had us right out of the box. Mark and I joined in 82. We've been in the group for five years. Um, we joined at probably a low point in the heart career, which has ups and downs like anything else, you know. And um, we, our first record that we played on was the Passion Works record had a moderate amount of success in the United States, nothing thrilling. And um, that was sort of a feeling out process for us. It was our, our first record as the five of us. And uh, after that record, we sort of took stock of, what, of, of our career and decided that, yeah, we did want to go on as the five of us because it was a nice chemistry but there needed to be some changes and we changed management we changed record company and we changed record producers and the result of that was the last heart record yes i've 
I've been doing this a long time. I've been in bands uh, since 1966, 65, and in through school. But those were uh, when I started to play with national acts. It's been a, it's been fun. I was with Can't Heat, Spirit, JoJo Gunn, Firefall, and now Heart. Danny's a vet too. He's been he's been through the wars, several of them. He's Gamma, Montrose. Sammy Hagar, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're a couple of wily old vets here. <laughs> well, I really enjoy what I do. I've never really be, uh, been so angry or bitter about any kind of experience that I've had that it's really torn me up. I think that is important. I really love what I do. I love the business. I like the people. I love the music. And uh, I've been lucky. I have, I have had enough success where I've been able to uh, maintain a, a, a nice way of living. But I'd never had too much success too soon. And I'd never had too much money early before I got uh, mature enough to really handle it. I think that was important, too. I look back at my career and I, I see I had success, but not this type of heart success that wild, over-the-top kind of success. When you're young, it's, it seems like it would be really tough to deal with a lot of success and a lot of money. When you're older, I think you can handle it better. Keep everything more in perspective. And uh, I think also the love of, of, of the music and yeah. being a musician and and just always growing. Being a musician is a, it's a never ending, lifelong process that, that never stops. That's right. I would also say that, that we've been lucky to hook up with people like Denny and I to come together at this point in our career was a, a great thing for me. That sometimes there's just good chemistry between people. And luckily, I've been involved with groups that have uh, describing keep you growing, keep you growing. I've never really been a part of anything for any length of time that really dragged me down. And I think that's sort of a sixth sense that you develop. You know when something's good for you, you know how long it's a productive thing, and you sense when to get out of any situation. So may, these are all subtle things, but things that take time. Uh, we, you know, also we've, you, we're, it takes time to be a good musician, and I think that luckily we were never real image, uh, fashion people. We, we were the journeyman players. We always had uh, the respect of our peers, which was a very cool thing to have and early on, you know. And we had that to fall back on. Whenever it got rough, for me, I could always rely on my skill as a musician, which makes a difference. A lot of kids, you know, they get the... Get uh, success before they really have anything to fall back on and this is a very difficult uh, business to have anything to fall back on if you but if you have some skill you can weather fairly tough times without going nuts so I live in Southern California and uh, the rest Denny lives in San Francisco and Howard and Anna Nance live in Seattle we can't really get together casually to write <coughs> But if I would break it down to a very oversimplified way, I would say that the group collaborates with Denny, Howie, and I playing uh, music. When it's a group collaboration, it usually goes along the lines of the, the, the Howard, Denny, and myself putting some music together and giving that sort of uh, general feel of a thing to the girls. And if it's going to catch on, they'll start putting lyrics and melodies and then we will get back together and as a five piece unit rework it rearrange it accommodate uh music ch musical changes to accommodate lyrics and stuff like that <clears throat>